this um, video is about the Defend and Confirm podcast and their recent attempt to refute theonomy. And <clears throat> I'm going to play part of this video. We mentioned before about the uniqueness of the law given to Israel not even necessarily being the same demands of the nations around Israel with that, that anim yeah. dead animal law. Uh, you see a principle taking shape here. Yeah, so I, I think that even if you move out of the realm of theology, you can even see this practically, right? Like, as a dad, you tell your kids, hey, as a part of this family, we expect more of you. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. Um, now, you may be feeling, if you're listening to this and you're like, yeah, but I just, I feel like God's law given to Israel, don't blaspheme, don't commit false worship, don't follow idols. Like, there's more, there's more to that instruction in the Old Testament law for us today than merely to say, well, the government can't enforce that. Right. And I think that's, I think that's right. Course, yeah. We're just missing the <coughs> institution that has inherited that authority, that, that yeah. is the successor to Israel, and that is the church. In the new covenant... Um, the problem with this is that Jesus told his disciples to teach all nations everything he's commanded, and God's law commands that... Uh, judges be put in place who determine the guilt of people based on the evidence of two to three witnesses. And there's nothing in the Bible that says these judges have to be in the church. We actually have Romans 13 that makes clear that God establishes civil authorities to wield the sword against the evildoer to punish evil and reward good. And there's nothing in Romans 13 that requires these people to be um, in the church. Though we should try to make them in the church by discipling them and making them Christians, but it doesn't become exclusively the church's job to judge matters of civil justice. And what this man believes is that the governing authorities, such as like secular governing authorities, um, should not have the uh, authority to punish uh, like something like a blasphemy law, something that you might find in the first table of the Ten Commandments, laws that, that, that deal with sins against God. Um, but uh, Scripture tells us that we are to teach these pagan peoples to follow God's law, and even if all of them aren't converted, they still should be enforcing the laws that God said should be enforced, like a blasphemy law, in when he told the Israelites how to enforce his law. And that law and that authority to enforce broadly the law comes to the church. Uh, we should make, we should bring civil authorities into the church by making disciples of them, teaching them everything that Christ has commanded, but they're not all going to be converted right away, and they still, according to Romans 13, have the authority to punish evildoers. <clears throat> uh, consider First Corinthians. So, sorry. And they should be doing that according to God's law. Even if they're not saved, they're still obligated to establish the justice that we teach them to establish. They're still obligated to punish people justly, and the only way you can possibly know how to punish people justly is by looking at God's law. And we're supposed to teach them God's law. And even if they don't become born again, they're still obligated to be the minister of justice and enforce God's law. First table. Yes. First table enforcement. All ten commandments. So now the church can execute people for not obeying the Sabbath. Well, your church doesn't do that. <laughs> your church too, buddy. Well, as a successor to Israel in the new covenant, that authority to render judgments on all 10 commandments is ours. Okay. So if you as a church are, are faithfully preaching the gospel, you're a true church, right? You're representing Jesus on earth as his ambassador here. He has given you the keys of the kingdom, right? That's the symbol. The yes, the church can render judgment concerning whether something is right or wrong and whether to uh, whether or not to excommunicate somebody. Um, but according to Romans 13, it's not the 
church's job to execute people. It's the civil government's job to execute people. Word picture yeah. for the church's authority. Right. That authority is the authority to render judgments that encompass the entirety of the law. Right. Anything, any sin within God's law, anything he says, don't do this, can ultimately lead to excommunication. If it be but God's law that we're supposed to teach the pagans is the death penalty, not just excommunication. And the church doesn't have, is, is not the exclusive entity that should carry out um, execution. It's the civil government is supposed to carry out the execution along with the help of the people in the public because we see in God's law the requirement for public execution at the hands of all the congregation. So the church is involved, but it's not exclusively the church. We also have the civil government um, involved in this process. <clears throat> and they're the ones who actually ultimate, make the ultimate determination on if somebody should be put to death. The church isn't necessarily doing that. The, the church is participating in the execution, but they're not determining who's executed necessarily. There could be a government that's made up completely of Christians that could, and, and that could happen, but you also could have a government that has pagans in it who are still obligated to decide whether or not somebody deserves the death penalty, and it's not exclusively the church's decision. The church participates in the execution, but the church does not uh, establish the guilt of the person. Um, we see this is taking into account God's, both God's law in the um, Old Testament and the, require, the uh, Romans 13 requirement that civil governments punish evildoers, even if, when they're not converted significant enough in the life of, of a person in the church and yet there's a change there right it's no longer oh you committed blasphemy and you you continue to and you're not repentant well we're just going to take you outside the camp and, and stone you now that idea of purging the unholy person yeah. from amongst god's people in the new testament is changed to its spiritual reality that's right uh, which is the greater reality? Well, and, honestly. And, and the spiritual reality was present in the Old Testament. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's that's important. Like this idea of physical punishment of sin, punishing the blasphemer by taking him outside the camp and stoning him. That's what God said Israel must do. That was always a symbol of the greater death, of of the second death, of that's God's right. wrath for eternity. That's why they were outside of the camp. That's where death goes. And God also commands us to teach that law to the pagans so that pagan civil governments practice that law of purging the evil from amongst societies through execution, through stoning, through public congreg congregational stoning. That's what God told us to teach pagan nations. Jesus said, teach them everything that I've teach. He said to teach everything that I've commanded you. Go make disciples of all nations, teaching them everything that I have commanded you. What's that God's law that requires the civil government to stone people with the help of the congregation? So now we see in the New Testament that the church as the successor of Israel, true Israel, has received that same authority to render judgments about something like blasphemy. But what is the, what does the punishment look like? Well, consider 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, you have Paul talking to the the, Corinth, the church in Corinth that is dealing with a pretty abominable sin. And he says, hey, gather together and kick this guy out. Purge the evil person from among you. Yeah, that... Yep, they're supposed to purge the evil. But they're not the civil government. And so, that's why they're not determining whether or not the guy deserves the death penalty. That's the civil government's job. Verse 13, purge the evil person from among you. Paul is quoting texts like Deuteronomy 13. Wait, now listen. <laughs> Stay with me. And that doesn't invalidate Deuteronomy 13 and the requirement to civilly, in society, purge the evil from society. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, teaching them everything that I've commanded you, baptizing them. So now... The whole earth becomes the holy land 
the the place where God's law rules and is binding on all people equally. It's given now to all the nations. It was given to Israel exclusively before, but now all of God's law is supposed to be given to all the nations because we're supposed to teach them everything that Christ has commanded, which means we're supposed to teach them to purge evils from their society by executing criminals. 1 Corinthians 5, 13 is actually quoting Deuteronomy 13, 5. Ooh, get your numerology <laughs> on. Argue with that one. Hey, should I read it? <laughs> yeah, read it. But that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has taught rebellion against the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of slavery to make you leave the way in which the Lord your God commanded you to walk. So you shall purge the evil from your midst. So when we say that excommunication is the spiritual new covenant application of the old testament universal principle here mm -hmm. uh we are not making that up no yeah that's just exegesis and, and there's more parallels than we even have time sure. to get into right. i mean consider the fact that doesn't negate the fact that we're supposed to teach god's law that requires the civil government to purge the evil from society by executing criminals and this is for according to god's law blasphemy laws so we have to understand that these guys are not taking into account the Great Commission. And what one of them argues for is that the Noahic Covenant is what pagan governments are to be submitted to in the world today. Um, and, or maybe I should say just civil governments in general, whether they're Christian or pagan, are supposed to enforce the Noahic Covenant. That's what he believes. And he talks about how the main thing, according to Romans 13, that the civil government should be focused on is punishing evil that is done against other human beings that, um, and for preventing harm against human beings. Um, it's ridiculous to, to say that the civil government should, is, should only be dealing with the second table of the law that, that it deals with human-on-human -human, um, violations. Uh, you're actually not loving your neighbor if you don't follow God's law and do what God says you should do to prevent your neighbor from hurting themselves through blasphemy. Uh, 